Hello, welcome to Create Full Art. I'm Ashley Krieger, and today I would love to show you how to paint these beautiful moonlit clouds. We are having fun painting night skies this month, and if you enjoy relaxing while you paint, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so you don't miss out on all of this. All right, so let's begin relaxing, shall we? You will only need five colors to paint along. You want a primary blue color, a primary yellow, and a magenta. And then you want a white and a black. These colors will mix all the colors on our palette today. For the first color, it's just black. You can get the color mixing handout when you are a Create Plart member, and this will help you mix and match the colors we are creating today. Members also enjoy weekly art lessons, reference photos, and bonus full tutorials. So for this second color, we're going to mix our black and blue together with a little bit of magenta. Adjust those three colors until you see a color similar to this, which is a dark blue. Mix more of this color and then set it aside. I pre-mix and use this palette for all the paintings in the entire month. And so this next color we do not actually use in this painting, so we can skip creating it and go on to the next color which is almost completely white with just a tiny bit of black in it, you'll want to make a lot of that color and set it aside. The next color we will use is a muted yellow, so I'm just gonna grab my yellow and a little bit of white to lighten it. And then I will grab some magenta and that will start to warm up that color and turn it towards the orange. I wanna adjust those colors until it is the right color. Make more of that color and then set it aside. Now I'm going to make a bright orange with my yellow and my magenta and all you need to do is adjust those two colors until you've reached a bright orange that looks very similar to this color. Make more of that color and set it aside. The next color is a soft reddish pink color so I'm going to use my magenta, a little bit of my yellow, a tiny bit of blue dulls the color down. Then I will use my white to lighten the color. I adjust those four colors until I reach the desired color that I'm trying to match. And you don't have to get this color exactly right for this painting to turn out. Make more of this color for this painting and you are all set. You can also use these colors for more than this tutorial. All month long we are using the same palette. I keep my colors wet and fresh all month long in the Stay Wet palette. I put a link to that below. And then I'm ready to paint every time I sit down. You also need just a few other supplies. Those are also listed in the description and then you are ready to start. The first step is always my favorite because you can just sit back and relax while you get paint down on your canvas. Grab a big flat brush or a wash brush and then you just put black on it and you're getting that black down on your canvas. Your brush strokes don't matter. Just have fun getting that black down all over it. Once you're done with that first layer, you don't have to clean your brush or anything. Just grab your dark blue, add it to your canvas, and start blending that color in with your black. To do that, you just go over the same area multiple times and it'll start mixing those two wet colors together. I'm gonna focus on putting more of that blue in the upper left corner. Although I will add some of that blue all around. Just want the upper left hand corner to be a little bit lighter. Now this is where your personal preferences come into play. So you can make your painting have more of a loose brush stroke, which will give it a more textured background. Or you can decide to make it more realistic by taking off some of the paint and getting rid of some of the brush marks. By also blending more, you also get a more realistic look. So it just depends on what your preferences are. And you can just stop whenever you're ready to go on to the next step. I like it how it is right now, so I'm going to move on. Now for some reason, my camera didn't record this next step, but what it is is you are basically putting stars on your canvas, and this is from a different tutorial that's this month. And so I'm gonna just show you here that you take your bristly brush or toothbrush and you put white paint on it and a little bit of water and you use your finger like this pulling back on it and flicking the paint on your canvas. Now when you're close to your canvas like this you're going to get a lot more stars and when you pull away from your canvas they're going to be further away from each other and bigger stars. You can see that in this painting tutorial I pulled away from the canvas which made bigger stars that are further apart. 
And with my half inch brush right now, I'm taking some of those stars out and just blending them with the background color. How you want your stars and how many stars are both totally up to you. You can also take your detail brush and make some of your stars larger. You can even add dots of different colors into your stars. Maybe those are planets or different types of stars. Shooting stars are also fun to add. This is a great time to just have fun and be creative. Now we're going to paint the moon. You want to find a small round object such as a coin or a bottle cap. Place it in the upper right area of your canvas and then with your detail brush and some white you're going to trace around that object. Make sure you hold down your object so it doesn't move and take your time to make a good circle. Then lift up your round object and you should see the beginning of your moon. Now at this point you can decide what type of moon you want to paint. This is a great time to be creative. Focus on putting more white in this left bottom corner and dab filling in your moon. So notice my dabbing motion with my detail brush. I add more white paint on the edges and then I put less paint as I go towards the center and I leave some of that black showing. This gives the moon the look of craters. To get the crescent look, just focus more on getting the white in the top and the bottom and the very left side of the moon and less color in the center. If you want a half moon, then you just pull that white into more of the center area. And then if you want to do a full moon, you just keep on adding that white throughout your moon, dabbing, leaving some of the black for a crater look. Have fun deciding what moon you would like and being creative. To make your moon brighter, you may have to add additional layers of white after your moon dries. To paint your clouds, this is a great time to get the reference photo to help you paint along. Use your small filbert brush and then with your yellow in a circular motion, add some small brush marks and then move that color around. Notice how I'm using an irregular pattern with my clouds. I'm leaving sections of the black to show so it'll separate my clouds and I'm also blending some of the yellow color with the wet paint behind it and that just creates a softer looking cloud. So also notice that I'm shaping my clouds right now. So you don't have to shape yours exactly like mine but I'm focusing on this left bottom corner and getting the yellow to be the very edge of my cloud. The edge should be glowing so if the cloud is not facing the moon in some areas just like over on the left side of that cloud then it should blend more with the background color. So notice how I'm just using a swirly motion and dragging some of that yellow to make a softer yellow and I'm also creating just the rounded shape by using a rounded motion when I'm doing my brush strokes. Notice how my brush strokes have a very similar shape. If I want to have a different one, I'm going to grab a bigger filbert brush and I want to add some color into my clouds. So I'm adding orange. You don't have to add color to your clouds. You could always just use the yellow or you could add pink instead of the yellow. Any color that you want to create the lightest color is fine. So I'm dragging the orange into my clouds using the same motion and I'm going to have less of the bright orange because it's the yellow that is glowing not the orange so I am blending that orange with the yellow and that background color. Switching between the two filbert brushes will make my clouds look more natural which is it'll give it more variety of puffy cloud shapes. The shadow areas of my cloud is already painted for me it's the background color so I want to leave some of that color showing through while I'm creating the puffy shapes of my cloud. And if I want to have a brighter color and I have color on my brush, then I will wipe off my brush so that my color will be more saturated. So watch how I created less saturation and wanted to move that color around. And so I wiped off some of the color. Parts of your cloud are going to come forward because there's layers of clouds here. And as you come forward, then the cloud will come down. So your brush strokes and your colors will start coming down on your canvas. 
So if you think of the canvas as levels, the upper part of your clouds are the top of the clouds, and they're more towards the center of your canvas, while the bottom part of the clouds is more towards the bottom part of your canvas. Adding blue to the shadow parts of your clouds will make it look like the clouds are not see-through, that this is one full cloud. I'm using the same brush stroke, basically, and just filling in the black area in that bottom left corner. Sometimes I will take the color next to the blue and I will blend the two together, which will give the transition a softer look. Our paintings might look similar or they may be very different at this point, and that's okay. I wouldn't even be able to copy my own painting like this exactly because I'm going to have a variety of brush strokes in here and your brush strokes are going to look different than mine. Where you place your color isn't going to be the exact spots that I place my color. So really the focus is to have the yellow on the outside. Drag some of that yellow just out a little bit for some softer clouds like pulling away from the yellow clouds and let that blend together and then Take the orange or a different color if you would like, only if you want to, and give it a layer underneath the yellow and let it blend a little bit with the yellow by just creating a in-between color by letting those two colors touch each other. And then all you need to do is drag some of that orange color down a little bit further, letting it blend with the background color, and then you're adding the blue color to make this cloud full and not the same color as the background. Blending and moving color around takes practice. So this is a great time to get in that practice. Every time you want a saturated color like I just added there, you don't blend it. You just add it on top of the background color. And applying it thickly will give it a more brighter look. Less paint on your brush allows the two colors to blend together, the background color and whatever color you're adding. And so it'll give it a softer look and a more in-between color. The cloud will look fuller if you concentrate on adding some of the bright color a little bit away from the edge. Notice how I just did that with the orange. Now we're to the final step of the painting in which we put in the final details and these have to do with our personal preferences. So right now you can shape your clouds a little bit different if you would like blend your colors a little bit more with each other or with the background color to get a more softer look if you would like. Adding more layers on your clouds of the bright saturated colors, that means the pure color, is going to make the painting pop and look more like it's glowing along the edges. Add more of that if you like the look. You could also extend your clouds to the bottom right if you'd like. I barely have any color on my brush to get this soft yellow color. So it will look like the light from the moon is just barely touching that part of the cloud. You could make your cloud look more full by adding some of that same light yellow into the lower parts of your cloud. You could add other colors on your palette in your moon if you would like, or add more white to make it look like it's more glowing. Having more layers of the light colors will make it appear brighter and have more pop. Having additional colors may give the painting more harmony. Depends on the look you want. And this step is another great time to add anything in your night sky that you would like. You can also add additional colors to your clouds if you would like. I'm just adding tiny bit of pink to my brush and just moving in a circular motion to get a light layer of this pink. You could also take out some of the colors if you don't like the colors and just use one color. Acrylics are great because you can always go over anything you don't like just by adding the color you want on top of the color you don't want. Another thing you can do is soften your clouds. Now notice how I took off a lot of the color off of my brush. So basically I'm using a brush, a dry brush, and just moving the colors into each other. It feels like I'm scrubbing those two colors together on my canvas and that creates a softer look in my clouds. Because the softer those transitions of colors from one to the other are, the softer the clouds will look. Again, follow the look that you like. In this tutorial I've given you the tools so now you know how to create the night sky and the clouds and the moon the way that you like it. It will take practice so give yourself grace and just enjoy the process. Painting gives you more when you allow yourself to have fun and relax. 
make sure you give yourself plenty of opportunities to do that. You deserve it by hitting that subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you will know when I have a new tutorial available for you. You are also welcome to learn more with me. By becoming a Create for Art member, you sign up for weekly art lessons that will help you become a better artist, the reference photos to help you paint along, and access to my full tutorials and other bonus content. You can also enjoy more tutorials with me. Thank you for taking this time to relax together today, and happy painting, my friend.